example, I write, compose, arrange, transpose, trans. I have a fundamental understanding of how music works. And you lecture on all these subjects? I, yeah, because all of these fields uh, intertwine at some given point. If you, if you, if you, if you get into music, you're going to encounter uh, phonology, which is a branch of linguistics that studies sound, and music is sound. And if you study in uh, what is sound, if an A chord is 440 hertz, and you double 440 hertz is basically cycles per second, so number of wave vibration. So we've just transcend, transcended beyond music into physics. So they overlap at some given point in different areas. Okay. You remember you have at least five primary ironies. You have dramatic, situational, verbal, tragic, and Socratic, which we will explore in more detail. It's equivalent to, here's a perfect musical metaphor or analogy, uh, where jazz musician explores the dissonance in sound. It's out of key, but it's, you know, technically it's in key, but in dissonance. But they're freestyling. It's, it's intuitive. But they kind of have a fundamental understanding of how music works. Got it. They know the major, the minor, the diminished, the augmented, that sort of stuff. So there's a sense of awareness and there's a sense of unawareness occurring simultaneously. Music is physics. Got it. Right. Right. Investments is economics. Once you're dealing with investment, you're dealing with mm -hmm. economics, you're dealing with physics. Sound travels mm -hmm. 700 miles an hour. It is the collision of air molecules. So I would like mm -hmm. to know what occurs on a molecular level when sound travel. So being able to write and compose music, understanding the physics of music is, is inevitable. It helps you embody music as a whole far more effectively. Here's a, one of the phenomena in music is octaves. Why we hear octave, it turns out that we hear logarithmically, meaning that the human ear interprets sounds in inc increments. So when you hear A chord primarily is 440 hertz, that is the number of waves that occurs per cycle. Hertz was actually mm -hmm. named after a person. When you double the frequencies, 440 hertz, you get 880. So you have a higher frequency, right? But it's the same sound. It constitutes an octave. To understand this in music, you have to study physics. Now, physics and music are mutually exclusive, you know. But once you deal with the sound of music, you go in and dwell into the collision of air molecules. I think you could appreciate a concept or a field without having an infatuation with an individual because these things are mutually exclusive. You have Beethoven and you have music. It's two different sort of study. So you could extract Beethoven's and Mozart and, and Bach. You could extract their concepts and their ideas, mm -hmm. but you could have no interest in indiv individuals themselves. The irony, the sarcasm, the ambiguity, the paradoxes, the situational irony, the absurdity. So there's just so many, the phonological aspect of humor. When a person makes a sarcastic statement, a, sarcas a sarcasm is a literal statement, right? But it is inter interpreted metaphorically. It has contrasted interpretation. This contrast derives from tone. It has nothing to do with the literal statement. It's just the tone that contrasts the sarcastic statement. And this is phonology, a branch of linguistics that deals with sound. So when humor is evoked, you could study the humor and you could see where it derived from. And it has to do with the intonation, the rise and fall in the tone that evoked the laughter. So that's my interest. The laughter you derive from the tone. If you, if you make a condescending statement, is a result of tone. It's a literal statement, but the contrasting interpretation derives from tone. So once we understand what uh, condescension is on a rudimentary level, we know that this is a result of tone. When you study phonology, phonology has two branches, basically. You have segmental and you have supra-segmental, or also known as prosody. It's a field of linguistics that exp explores uh, intonation, inflection, modulation, and cadence. All it does, it takes literal statements and it studies the rise and fall, the rise and fall. And what occurs in human cognition in terms of how we interpret literal statements differently.
But you, you know, you're looking at uh, these laws that are inherent in comedy, you know, mm -hmm. like tell ever. Seems like you could uh, generate them almost with like a mathematical formula. No, these are not inherent laws. In physics, there's inherent law. Uh -huh. They have something in, in physics called immutable deductive law. Immutable deductive law are uh, phenomenons that are it's going to occur regardless of my or your subjective view. Right? These are these are these are ideas and concepts that just exist in an objective sense. Right. In humor, it's a com from a completely different perspective. What linguistics does, it gives us the ability to unravel it. It allows us to, to understand how the laughter derived and what is sarcasm. So it's not really a mathematical equation or algorithm. It's just a tool. It's, what, it's just a, a tool to allow us to unravel, demystify this sort of enigma. Like someone who makes a uh, sarcastic statement or condescending statement and it hurts, but you can't figure out why. So this is where language comes in. So it's not a formula. It's just a tool to help us understand how things work on a fundamental level. There's something called uh, uh, you have uh, you have lexical ambiguity, you have syntactic, you have structural, you have grammatical, you have punctuational ambiguity. And stream is a is a is a is a uh, is a lexical ambiguity. Lexical ambiguity is basically when a word has multiple interpretations, where the noun precedes the verb, or the verb, verb precedes the adjective. But in this context, you're dealing with a verb. Stream is a verb or an adjective. Stream, it's stream. Stream is a verb. But then you have a metaphor. Sure. Because streamed is used is a metaphor virtually. So you have yeah, four. No, no, right. we get it. There's, there's, there's two meanings of stream. Right. One is the, one is the verb, and one is the metaphor. I'll put it this way. If I write a paper on music, chromatic scales, diatonic scales, chord construction, I'll make a video and illustrate it. So I'm coming from two different perspectives. So you're not going to read a paper and say, well, maybe he plagiarized this. Maybe it's verbatim. Maybe he extracted this from somewhere else, regurgitating someone else's work. But yet, you have the visual attributes involved.